Okay, so today we're going to be performing in-house chemistry. Um, so we're going to be running blood work in-house, and I'll go ahead and uh, talk you through what we're doing here. So today uh, we are running a, um, a Chemistry 17. We use uh, IDEX lab machines here. So Chemistry 17, um, we're going to check our electrolytes, so light 4 clip. And we're also going to be running a CBC as well. Um, and then we're going to be running a canine SNAP CPL test using our serum. So uh, we do have our um, green top right here, and that's what we're going to use to run our chemistries here. And we do have our lavender top tube here, um, and that is going to be used for our hematology portion. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'll kind of walk you through what we're doing here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our lab machine and we're going to click our patient. So the patient we're running on today is Daisy. So we're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to click run. A little tricky to do with gloves on. Um, and then we're going to click our machines that we need uh, for this. Uh, particular type of test that we're running today. So uh, we're going to use our ProSide DX. This is our hematology machine. We're going to be using our Catalyst DX. This is our blood chemistry machine. Um, and then we're also going to be using our Snapshot DX. So this is the machine that we would use to run um, our Snap CPL in the house. And then after that we're going to click run. So you will see over here that this uh, activated our hematology machine to open up. Okay, so we're going to take our uh, lavender, or lavender chop tube, our whole blood, um, gently mixing. We're going to put it in, we're going to press the button, and it's going to go ahead and start our CBC. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run our blood on our catalyst here. So we're going to click our screen here. We're going to click our patient, which is Daisy. We're going to click select. So it's asking for a sample type. So we're going to click whole blood next. And it's going to open its little drawer here. So and this machine runs off of a uh, green top put Daisy's sample in. And this machine uh, measures uh, different organ functions, uh, liver and kidney values. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our uh, light four clip. So this is our electrolyte clip. We're going to put that in. And then we're going to take our chemistry 17 clip and we're going to put that in next. We're then going to click run, and it's going to go ahead and take a sample and run it. Okay, so finally we're going to shift back over to here. So the final part of our test that we're doing today is a uh, canine uh, CPL test. So this uh, checks for pancreatitis um, in dogs. So according to the manufacturer's instructions, um, it calls for three samples of serum. So we already have our serum spun down. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take three drops and it comes with a, its own little transfer pipette and a little mixing tube. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to do three drops. So one, two, three. side and it also calls for four drops of our conjugate one two three four so we're going to gently invert our tube four to five times 
Another thing to note is, um, according to the manufacturer's instructions for running this, you do want to make sure that your uh, SNAP CPL test has been acclimated to room temperature. So this has been sitting out for at least 30 minutes. Um, and another thing before we put in our test is we're going to make sure that our machine is ready. So this is our SNAP uh, test here. So we're going to click our patient's name. So this is Daisy. We're going to click select. And we're going to pick our particular type of SNAP test. So this is a CPL, a canine pancreatic lipase test. And it asks for serum, so that automatically chooses its uh, preferred sample type. So, Okay, so uh, according to the instructions here, it says pour contents of sample tube into the sample well on the SNAP test. When the color first appears in the activation circle, firmly press the activator and then we put in the SNAP test into an available port. So we'll go ahead and move over here and we will do that. Okay. So this is our sample well. So we're going to put our entire contents of our tube into our sample well. And as soon as you see the sample reach the bottom window, that is when you firmly uh, snap the test down. You want to make sure it's on a flat surface and you want to make sure you depress it all the way down. And that activates the test to start. Snap it all the way down. We're going to go ahead and take it over to our machine here. And we're going to go ahead and put it in. Okay. And it looks like it says processing. So we're just going to make sure and stay here. Um, and then it says in process. So it'll give us a specific uh, amount of time left. You always want to hang out and make sure that your test starts running properly. And it looks like Daisy's CPL is running in the right port and we have about uh, 10 minutes left on it. Okay, so now that uh, Daisy's blood work is completed, we will go ahead and go over our results and record it in our patient's chart, which we have right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off. So um, I'll zoom in so we can see her blood work a little bit better here. We'll kind of discuss some of her abnormalities. Okay. So this first top portion that you're seeing here, make sure you can see. This top portion that you're seeing right here is um, is this whole thing right here that we're looking at. It's her hematology portion of her blood work. So this is her CBC. CBC stands for complete blood cell count. So this first top portion right here, we'll go over all this normal portion. Uh, we're looking at mostly her red blood cells here. So as you can see, we're looking at her red blood cells, her hematocrit hemoglobin, mean corpus value, MCH, MCHC, um, reticulocytes uh, in a percentage and as a regular number, um, and her white blood cell count. So um, as you can see, our reference range is right in between these two gray lines here. So uh, because it is within the reference range, this black color also indicates um, uh, that this is a normal value. However, um, we always look for trends on blood work, so um, basically it's always nice to have a baseline blood work to compare these and even these normal values to, because even though these are normal um, today, that's not to say that uh, from her previous blood work, some of these so-called normal values could have also been climbing. So um, just another good reason to have, you know, uh, regular blood, blood screenings on your, especially senior an animals here. Um, so anyways, um, but for today, um, we don't actually know her blood work history, so um, we can just look at this as today and consider these normal values. Um, again, um, veter or technicians, you know, we really only record the results 
um, the veterinarian is the one that ultimately goes over and um, reads the blood work. So that's not really our job, but I'm just kind of trying to describe how it works. Okay, so as we move down, we're moving down to the lower part of her um, blood work here. So this um, is again, still part of her uh, hematology. So this is part of her CBC, but now we're kind of looking at more of her um, platelet count and we're looking at her white blood cells here. So um, we're looking at her neutrophil count here. So uh, the NEU stands for neutrophils. So this uh, is called neutropenia. So this is a low uh, white blood cell count um, and we're going to record it, um, so we're going to write, I'm writing in her chart here, so we're going to write 2.83 thousand per cubic millimeter, or excuse me, mill milliliter, gosh. Okay, so we recorded that value, um, and then we can also see the next value here is her lymphocytes. Um, so this is also a type of white blood cell. Um, we are showing that this is high. So um, we're gonna go ahead and record the values um, and we're gonna record it as we are seeing it here. So we're gonna write um, 6.40 thousand, or 6.4 thousand per cubic milliliter. Okay. The next value we're going to look at is her monocytes. This is a type of uh, red, or excuse me, what's all, and it and, uh, looks like we're 2.61. Um, so we're going to record this here. So as you can see, her monocyte count is a little bit high. So we're going to record that. So 2.61 um, thousand per cubic milliliter. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll move on. So it looks like she has normal eosinophil and basophil counts, low normal, um, and uh, eosinophils and basal, basophils are types of white blood cells. Um, her platelet count is also uh, marked as low here. So um, it is 69. The reference range is between 148 and 484. Um, so we would consider this low, so we'll make sure we record that in our chart as well. So we will write it as 69, um, let's see, 69,000 per cubic milliliter. Okay. Okay, and then finally the last thing we're looking at here is um, for her hematology portion of her blood work is we're looking at her platelet hematocrit, which is also recorded as low uh, according to her blood work. So we can, it's stated as a percentage, so 0.06%. And so we'll make sure that we record that in her blood work as well. So 0.06% low. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to cruise on down to her catalyst results. So this uh, part of her blood work portion uh, looks at organ chemistries um, as well as different different chemistries. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So uh, glucose, um, it, shows that, it shows that her glucose is a little bit low here so we're definitely going to record that. So uh, 50 uh, milligrams per deciliter um, and the reference range is between 70 and 143 milligrams per deciliter. So we'll go ahead and make sure that we record that. So low glucose, uh, 50 milligrams per deciliter. Okay. Uh, BUN, BUN is a kidney value. Uh, and I forgot to state, but glucose um, is our uh, um, blood sugar. Um, so that's a little bit low. So um, she's a little, um, hypoglycemic. Um, our BUN and creatinine are both high, marked as high. These are both kidney values. Um, so our BUN we would write as BUN 58 milligrams per deciliter as well as our creatinine we're right here. Creatinine at 2.0 milligrams per deciliter. So um, 
We're gonna move down to her phosphorus, um, and it is 7.2 milligrams per deciliter. 7.2 milligrams per deciliter. Okay, and we can kind of keep moving down. So calcium, total protein, albumin, globulin um, are all uh, within our blood work's normal range here, um, at least according to this blood work. Again, um, the veterinarian ultimately is the one that really decides what is normal here, but um, it's just in our normal reference range for today's lab work. Okay, um, so we're moving down. So um, in this particular case, uh, the ALT actually did not read um, for this dog, and the reason we suspect uh, is because uh, we suspect that it, there is something wrong with the ALT, either um, it's way too high to read, or, uh, or there's some kind of uh, machine error. So we'll probably rerun the ALT and just check to make sure that um, it's not just a machine error. But um, anyways, we'll go ahead and continue. So the ALT unfortunately did not read, but that is a liver value. Um, the alkaline phosphatate, um, the alkaline phosphatate is showing that it's, it's high. So we see the reference range is between 23 and 212. Uh, units per liter, and uh, Daisy's alkaline phosphatate is 460 units per liter. So it is high, so we'll make sure we refer that as well. So we're going to write 460 units per liter alkphos, A-L-K-P. Okay, we move down to her GGT. Uh, this is also a liver value. Um, our blood work today is reporting this as a high value, so our reference range is between 0 and 11. Uh, Daisy's just a little over that, she's uh, 12 units per liter, so we'll make sure we report that. 12 U per L. It looks like our um, cholesterol, uh, amylase and lipase, those are digestive enzymes secreted by the pancreas. Uh, those are normal. Potassium is within normal range, um, and it looks like our uh, CPL. So our CPL was the um, that's showing up here. So our CPL result is way down here. So this is our canine pancreatic lipase test. So we were also checking to see if she had any signs of pancreatitis, um, and it was normal today. So that's good. So we'll make sure we record that. So we'll write CPL normal. Okay, so now that we have our recorded uh, results here, um, the next thing I would do is I would print off uh, this copy of her lab work and I would present it to the veterinarian and uh, kind of read her some of the abnormalities. But again, ultimately she's the one that kind of looks at it and decides uh, what's normal and abnormal for this dog. Okay, so today we're going to be preparing a blood sample to send out for outside laboratory testing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have our appropriate samples uh, that the test requires. So the test we're setting out today is a Chemistry 21 with a standard CBC, so this is just kind of a wellness profile. Um, and according to our instructions, we need one mil of serum and one lavender top two. So we'll go ahead and get that ready here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our Blood tubes are labeled with our patient name and the date. So the patient's name is Daisy. We'll put today's date here. And I'll make sure I put her last name too. Daisy Knutson. And finally, we have our lavender top tube. I'm just going to gently mix it, and we're going to write our name on it. So um, the other important thing to do is uh, to make sure that uh, be before you can send out your serum, you want to make sure that you uh, spin it down. So we're going to go ahead and spin this down uh, in our centrifuge here before we send the test out. So we're going to go ahead and load it in our centrifuge.
And we're going to spin our blood down for five to ten minutes here at about, um, about 3,000, uh, 3,500 RPM. Okay, so now that our blood is done spinning, the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and package it up uh, according to the manufacturer's instructions. Or the laboratory's instructions, excuse me. Okay, so we have what looks like at least two mils of serum in our serum separator tube. So that's good. Uh, it looks like our test is calling for one mil uh, in a lavender top tube and two mils of serum. So we'll go ahead and package it up. We're putting it in our laboratory specific bag. So we use IDEX laboratory. And we're going to take our purple top tube um, with our one mil of whole blood. We're going to put it in there as well. We're going to make sure we seal our bag really tight. And finally, uh, one of the most important things is we want to make sure that we put the correct uh, test sheet with our lab sample. And then I'm just going to place it on the front of the bag here. And many uh, laboratory bags will have a separate pouch um, for uh, the lab sample, so in case anything in here spills, your lab sheet won't get ruined. And finally, um, you can either put it out directly into your lab box, or if you put it out at a specific time during the day, in the meantime, you can put it in the refrigerator. Um, so you do want to make sure your blood samples are refrigerated. Um, if you were putting it into the lab box, you want to make sure there is a cold ice pack. Um, you want to make sure your lab box is insulated. Um, but we'll go ahead and put it in the refrigerator for now, and I'll kind of show you what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to walk on over to our refrigerator. Okay, we're going to open, and you will see in our fridge. You're, you're going to see in our fridge here, um, this space is for IDEX lab samples only. So you're going to make sure you put it in here. As you can see, our other lab tests all have, uh, should look similar. And then at the end of the day, we have a specific time in which we put our lab samples out into our, our lab box. Um, so that's how you send out a uh, in-house, or excuse me, a send out uh, chemistry, uh, blood chemistry.